Okay, let's pray then. Loving Father, we are uh, grateful that we can come again on this Wednesday evening to, uh, to be together and to study the scriptures, especially the book of Ephesians, which we know has some very rich uh, theology, and uh, uh, Christian meaning for us, Father, for our walk in, in Christ. So do help us to tune in and to understand and continue to grow in that grace and knowledge that you want us to be with Praveen as he leads us and uh, continue, Father, to uh, make all things uh, go well it's in terms of the technicalities. And once again, we just submit this uh, hour into your hands, certainly thanking you once again for this opportunity that we have in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, we will continue our study from uh, Book of uh, Ephesians. And uh, last week we have seen the overview of Chapter 1. And uh, this week we are going to, uh, overview of Chapter 1 we have seen. And this week we are going to take uh, uh, one of the topics from Chapter 1. Okay. <laughs> Before we do that, I would like to give a small recap of what we have uh, seen as an overview of Ephesians Chapter 1. We have seen in Ephesians chapter 1, first part, uh, the greetings and salutations. And uh, secondly, uh, Apostle Paul explains about various blessings that as a church, as a body of Christ together, we have received. And then Apostle Paul offers a prayer for all the believers uh, in the, you know, uh, Apostle Paul offers a uh, prayer for all the believers. That we can see, and especially if you look at, uh, and we have seen uh, the blessings that we received as a body of Christ, and these blessings also were being divided into three parts, uh, and we can call blessings from the Father, blessings from the Son, and blessings from the Holy Spirit, and through which we have seen the church is a Trinitarian entrepreneurship church is a Trinitarian, Trinitarian enterprise. Or church is something that's a, that is uh, founded founded on Trinitarian activity of God, and we have seen uh, the three blessings as I said, blessings from the Father, which also can be called as uh, uh, the plans which are planned by the Father, in which we have seen crea uh, Jesus God created. Father is the one who who planned uh, the church as the body of Christ, and. Uh, <coughs> uh, he blessed us he chose us he predestined us he adopted us and he accepted us these are the blessings from the father and we have seen uh, these blessings from the son which also can be called as uh, the things that are purposed and accomplished in the son or by the son church was brought and purchased by the son and it was redeemed by the son forgave by the it was uh, forgave by the son and the son he revealed god's will and way to us he secured us an inheritance and he gathered all things in the fullness of time and we also see the last part of it that is uh, uh, the blessings from the holy spirit which we also can call uh, like the things that taught and protected by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is seal. He seals us, which means to say that God holds all the ownership and the rights over us, and Holy Spirit seals us, which means Holy Spirit is the security for us, and uh, uh, Holy Spirit seals us, which tells again uh, uh, the complete work of God. Uh, see, usually we use seal to show the complete transaction. Similarly, Holy Spirit, uh, see, being sealed by the Holy Spirit tells uh, that complete action, completion of the work of God. And he is our earnest, which means he is like the down payment for our salvation uh, or a fixed deposit for our security deposit for our salvation. In these terms, we can consider overall, we have seen that uh, uh, church is an enterprise or church is an organism uh, uh, where uh, where Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are three or three members of God are actively involved, and it is a Trinitarian enterprise. That's what we have studied uh, in the last week, uh, and we also studied sainthood, how we have received the sainthood, which is the work of God. And this week we are going to focus on one single point again, which uh, uh, Mr. Suryamurthy also asked. 
uh, the question about uh, spiritual blessings. So for which I would like to take the passage uh, from book, uh, uh, Epistle to Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 6 where it is written, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined to, uh, predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the Beloved, this is only half of the sentence uh, of uh, one of the, uh, you know, from one of the long passages, sentences Apostle Paul have written as uh, Mr. Suryamurthy also was saying that this was the longest passage in the Bible and Paul has used nearly 24 of uh, these uh, paragraphs or sentences. However, we won't be able to cover everything, but we will be covering one aspect <coughs> from this passage and connecting it with the rest of uh, the rest of the passage or rest of the verses so the focus will be on uh, spiritual blessings what are these spiritual blessings many times the moment we hear about the word spiritual blessings we think about uh, uh, spiritual blessings are uh, the blessings we find in um, uh, first corinthians chapter 12 uh, where it is uh, written that where it is written the holy spirit is given each of us in a special way that is for the good of all uh, to some people spirit gives message of wisdom to others the same spirit gives message of knowledge to others the same spirit gives faith to others the, sp uh, the spirit gives gifts of healing to others he gives the power to perform miracles to others he gives the ability to prophesy <laughs> To others, he gives the ability to uh, tell the uh, spirits apart, uh, and to others, he gives the ability to speak in different kinds of languages that they had not known before, and to uh, some others, the Holy Spirit gives the gift to interpret. You know, there are so many varieties of gifts Apostle Paul explains in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And the all these gifts are given for the benefit of the church. And all these gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. But and for, by, most of the times, the moment we hear about spiritual blessings, so our attention goes to these gifts. But in reality, what Apostle Paul was writing in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, where he said, uh, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings. That is not talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we are seeing in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are three kinds of gifts we find. Gifts of the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, and then gift of the Holy Spirit. Gifts of the Holy Spirit also can be called grace gifts. You know, that's why we, we got the word charismatics. Charisma means grace, attics means gifts, charismatics, uh, grace gifts. Uh, so, uh, but these three are entirely different. Gifts of the Holy Spirit are the gifts that are listed. And a gift of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit himself. Jesus said to his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem and uh, I will send you another comforter. And on the day of Pentecost, all the disciples, they have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Even we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, that is Holy Spirit himself. And the last thing is spiritual blessings. This spiritual blessings is not the gift of the Holy Spirit. Though it is given by the Holy Spirit, it is related to the Spirit and it is related to human spirit as well. Uh, this spiritual, the word spiritual is an adjective. It adds a value to a noun. It, it adds value to the uh, gift. But it is not uh, It is not a noun actually just like a gifts of the Holy Spirit or a, a gift of the Holy Spirit in, in that sense. Uh, so the spiritual gift, the spiritual gift is something related to uh, our spirit and something related to Holy Spirit for sure. So what are the, what are these uh, spiritual gifts? Uh, before we study that, we 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 read another word uh, from this passage that is blessed, because it is he blessed us with every spiritual blessings. So first we'll go with this blessing. What is this? 
uh, blessing and then we will consider about uh, spiritual thing from this. The Greek word used in the place of bless, blessed is eulogia. In various places, in this particular verse itself, this word has been used three times. And in these three times, a uh, single word has been used in different forms. So, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There, eulogi, uh, eulogitos, that is the Greek word has been used. Who has blessed us, the, uh, which is uh, the verb, verb form of eulogia. Uh, sorry, so the, it is called eulo, eulogi, eulogio. That is verb form of it. With every spiritual blessing, again here it is in the noun form. Uh, eulogi, sorry, eulogia. Previous one is eulogio. O, o is always verbs. Uh, eulogia is noun. In the heavenly places in Christ. So basically these three words are taken from one root word that is eulogia. You know, the, the moment we hear the word blessing, well, mostly we, we consider it like a commodity that we are receiving from God or some kind of power that we are receiving from God. Or it can be a materialistic uh, blessing or it can be health or some kind of things which we are releasing, re receiving it like a benefit that we are getting from God. But this word eulogia, it is not about uh, any uh, benefit that we are receiving from God like a commodity, like a house, car or any of such kind of thing. But this word means praise or speak well or speak good of praise. That's what uh, this word means, eulogia, from which we got our word also. Uh, eulogy. We, whenever somebody passed away in their memorial services, we speak. We speak only good things about them, and we highly we speak a uh, uh, high opinion about the person. So that is what this word is. It is not about receiving a commodity. So, uh, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings. In all these three places, the same word has been used. The benefit is the uh, if you uh, if uh, you know in interlinear Bible they give the meanings of the word. So the word benefit, blessing as a benefit is the it's all it's in the fifth fifth in the sequence. The first all the first things are praise and as uh, you know adore or speak well about uh, these kind of words only. Are there and this word has been used uh, in so many other places also we can find it in uh, mark chapter 14 verse 61 and luke chapter 1 verse 68 and romans chapter 1 verse uh, 25 and this word especially used in so many places uh, at, uh, especially to uh, a god like worshiping god praising god in that sense it has been used and there are certain places this has been used for church also and this is one among them which tells us that which tells god has a very high opinion about you and i we all have high uh, great opinion about god we all worship god and we all adore god and do you know that God has a very high opinion about you and me? And it is a very huge, very, very powerful uh, uh, spiritual battle that we face in our own lives. Every night we go, before we sleep, uh, you know, most of the times we feel God may not be happy with me. God may not be comfortable with me. He must be uh, finding, uh, you know, difficult to cope with me because of my continuous sin and all. But in reality, the scripture tells that God has a very high opinion about you and I. So that's what it uh, this this particular word speaks about. Uh, and another thing is, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a unique way of addressing God. Especially you will find in uh, the writings of Apostle Paul, in all his epistles, he will be using the for God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, because Apostle Paul is not interested in talking about any God, but he is always interested about talking about only one God who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, which tells Apostle Paul's 
perspective is completely a Christocentric perspective. He has Christ as a center and then he understands God. If there is no God other than the God who is the father of our, father of our Lord Jesus Christ and through which he challenges us always to keep our focus on Jesus. When we talk about God, if we don't keep our focus on Jesus, we will be doing mythology. As a Professor Gary Dedo, he says, you know, whatever we talk, if it is not centered around Jesus, then it is a mythology. If it is centered around Jesus, if it is focused on Jesus, then it is Christian theology. So here again, Apostle Paul, he reminds us about uh, uh, being Christo, Christocentric, uh, knowing about God, the father of all. Lord Jesus Christ. And let's come to these blessings. What are these spiritual blessings? He blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Or in some translations it is written, He blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Okay. The moment we hear this word, it seems like there are so many number of spiritual blessings and uh, uh, and he, he is giving one at a time or all package he is giving. Actually, the Greek word does not mean one or uh, uh, a set of things. The Greek, yeah, the Greek word means whole, the complete spiritual blessing. That's that is what he is talking about. And the rest of the verses in this same chapter, they are describing about this one spiritual blessing, the whole or the complete spiritual blessing. He is talking about God the Father, He blessed us with complete spiritual blessing and that spiritual blessing is manifested in this following blessings number one is he chose us god's selection in our life is a blessing that god had given us and he predestined us this is a blessing god had given us he adopted us and he accepted us and he appreciates us not just uh, blessing us with these things with the bad, bad, with these things but god doesn't have a bad opinion about us but he appreciates he has a very high great opinion about us and these are uh, these are completely free and these are completely the works of god this is completely by God's work. There is nothing that we can do to get any of these things. It is not that we have done anything to be chosen by God, to be predestined by God, to be adopted by God, to be accepted by God, or to be appreciated by God. It is completely the works of this work of God. That is the reason it is a gift. It is given by Him. And uh, uh, then the verse says that he blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Why is he blessing us in heavenly places? Because he is not blessing us in uh, outside, uh, yeah, sorry, directly, but he is blessing us in Christ. This is, uh, and Christ is in heaven now. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ and the in heavenly places. And one more, this tells us about uh, uh, the now and not yet aspect of this complete spiritual blessing and this whole spiritual blessing in our life. Yes, we have received it from the Father and we do, we do not experience it in its complete and fullness as of now and which we are going to experience it in the days to come. That is one aspect, uh, that is one thing it, it reminds us. So blessing us in heavenly places is talking about now and not yet aspect of the spiritual blessing. Another thing is Christ is in heaven and we have been blessed in Christ Jesus, that is why it is written that we are we are blessed in the uh, heavenly places. Another aspect of it is all these blessings that we which we have uh, spoken just now, being chosen, predestined, adopted, accepted, and appreciated. These are something that cannot be experienced um, that cannot be experienced physically in any way. Only in relationship we'll be able to experience it. Only in our spiritual relationship with God we'll be able to experience this. There are other gifts like gifts of the Holy Spirit we are talking about. Miracles are something we can physically also experience. And there are something, there are like uh, prophecies we can physically experience. Tongues we can experience physically. And uh, 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 interpretation of tongues we can experience physically. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge we will be able to experience uh, physically. But uh, the thing is, um, 
the intellectual aspect also comes under physical thing so that's the reason i'm saying uh, even word of wisdom word of knowledge can be experienced physically uh, but these election predestination adoption these things cannot be experienced as the other gifts these are these have to be experienced completely in a spiritual relationship in a relationship with god in the spirit only in that sense these things can be experienced experienced and these are of very high where they have very great value uh, in the sight of God. That is also one of the uh, interpretation we can take, take from uh, the word blessed us in heavenly places. So heavenly places means uh, in a, yeah, now a knotted aspect of it. And heavenly places, it tells us about uh, uh, that we are being, uh, Christ is in heaven and uh, we are, all our blessings we have received, we have received in heaven. That's, uh, sorry, we have received in Christ. That's why uh, these things are written about, written as we have bl uh, blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And the last aspect of it is, um, this is reminding about how great and how high these uh, gifts are in comparison with others. And then uh, the phrase it goes, he blessed us with every spiritual blessing that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay, God has chosen us to be holy and blameless with uh, before him. To be holy and blameless is the primary spiritual blessing that we have received from God. This is a complete blessing and all the list we have seen before the, the uh, that are like various aspects of one same gift. Okay. So holy being holy and uh, blameless before him is the primary spiritual gift we have received. And uh, God, uh, sorry, God wants us to be holy because God is holy. He is holy. That's why he wants us to be holy. And, uh, um even if we read the word uh, uh eulogio uh, which is the word blessing right uh, another meaning of the word blessing uh is to consecrate a thing with solemn prayers you know we say uh, bl blessing a child means we consecrate the child mm -hmm. for example like you know and we use this uh, the, the same word uh, has been used uh, to I mean the same word comes here to uh, provide help also when we talk about holy that means God is setting us apart God is consecrating us to himself again the blessing also to consecrate somebody to God okay so these all things gel together and tells this blessing and as well as what we are talking about these all are one thing Apostle Paul is explaining uh, and uh, so we are we are called to be holy because God is holy and blessing also means uh, consecrating uh, and then uh, we are made holy not by any of our moral or religious uh, uh, behavior perfection but we are made holy because of the love of God. We are chosen for a special purpose and we are set free, we are set aside, consecrated, uh, out of love, by which we are made holy. We are not made holy by any of our acts or any of our uh, uh, religious activities. And we are made holy not by our moral or religious perfection, but by the divine affection. He made us holy in love. Not, a, not in a law, not in behavior or anything, but in love, he made us holy. And uh, we God made us blameless, that also in love. And we are blameless in the love of God. Okay, If God has a high opinion about us, no, no one can accuse us. God is having a high opinion about us itself means we are blameless. That is out of the love of God. So again, going back to the main, same meaning, same word, eulogio, uh, blessing, means having a high opinion. And here we are talking about being blameless, means again having a high opinion. It is out of love. Out of love, God had given us 
this blessing he consecrated us and he had he has a high opinion about us and he proclaimed the same that is a great spiritual blessing we are receiving and another thing we see the same word eulogio which also means favored of god okay if god if uh, if we are the favor we are favored of god who can blame us being favored of god itself is being holy number one so set he set apart set us apart and then if god is favor in favor of us no one can blame us again it is coming to the same thing blessing eulogio that god is having high opinion about us so the great spiritual blessing we are receiving from god is out of his love he is having a very great opinion about you and me and the same thing is reflected in spiritual blessing so that is he chose us uh, in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless and we are we are predestined to adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself god makes us holy and blameless by making us his children god is not making us holy by doing some ritualistic things where he pours some blood or water or sprinkling of anything or various things that we are we see in various religions but god is not doing any of them he made us holy and blameless in very simple thing that is making us his children see look at the connection he made us holy and blameless by making us his children number 1 number 2 he made us holy and blameless in love he predestined us to be, to be holy and blameless look all these connections the all these things are related are completely interrelated so in order to make us holy and blameless he made us his children in love and that very act he has uh, he is doing in our lives because he has a very high opinion about us and that very act he is giving value to the value to ourselves that is the spiritual blessing that we are uh, receiving and we are adopted by jesus in the incarnation i don't want to speak much about these things just because they are in the same sentence i would like to add few points because i would like to talk about these in the uh, next session uh, so we are adopted by jesus christ in the incarnation in the incarnation jesus came and he took our flesh he adopted us and uh, now we are adopted into god uh, that is through our union with christ and we have studied in chapter 1 we are made members of the body of christ through our union in christ and similarly we are be, uh, we are adopted by being united to christ jesus uh, and we will we'll explore that little more uh, in the next session and uh, through adoption we are made sons so that we may partake in the divine life and the nature of god so we have we are been predestined us to be uh his ch his children according to his good pleasure and will he adopted us so that we may partake in his life eternity where is eternity for humans there is no uh, there is no eternity for humans we are all mortals but in god he had given eternity to us of course our eternity is not like god's but we are able to experience it a life that never ends we are able to experience a love and relationship that uh, that is flawless that's only god has so we are given opportunity to partake in the divine life and we are able to partake in the divine nature divine nature means we are not becoming god but loving is the act of nature of god and because of uh, god's work we are able to now love now love we are able to receive it perceive it we are able to reflect it so we are partaking in the divine nature and love of god so and ultimately why is he doing it he is doing it out of his good pleasure of his will he is not doing it just out of his will but look at the words apostle paul is pleasure of his will no 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 not just pleasure of his will also good pleasure of his will see why wow, it tells how greatly god is so very happy to adopt us as his children to be holy and blameless and because he has such a high opinion about us so when we read these words blessed be the god the father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us 
with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Out of his good pleasure, he chose us. So all these verses are very closely interconnected and they are talking about the same thing. Number one is God has a very high opinion about us. And number two, he made us holy and blameless through adoption uh, in um, and by making us his children through adoption. And uh, yeah, these are the two points. Number one is uh, having high opinion. He predestined us to be holy and blameless in uh, through in I mean through in and through the relationship which he has accomplished for us by adopting us in Jesus Christ. So all these things are interconnected. That is the spiritual blessing Apostle Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. And uh, I would like to stop here. Uh, uh, we can have some questions and discussions about it. Uh, and uh, would like to go further predestination or other things uh, later in the coming weeks. Uh, we can do that. Do you have any thoughts about what I have shared? Uh, I know it is sometimes it is a little difficult for us to take the moment we hear about the word blessing. We all have a preconceived notion and taking it in this sense, uh, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know how far, how, how you experience, but it is not that easy for everyone. Uh, please uh, feel free to ask any question or uh, if, feel free if you want to add any clarity or any uh, comments or if you want to add, please do that. Yes, sir. Surya sir. Yes, sir. Sir, you're on mute. Do you end up forgetting oh, this? This is yes, sir. We can hear you. Paul has used the word adoption. Adoption, yes. Father, the Father in heaven mm. has adopted us. Yes, sir. So there is something. It's very rarely some people can experience. Yes. If you bring a child into your family by adopting, it is a moment of very great joy, which uh, I I have experienced. It is something not it is not something explicable. Absolutely. So I feel when God adopted us, Father adopted us, it was he was not simply doing some legal matter. He was having a great joy. That is why what I feel. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. That's a great opinion he has about you and I. That's what we are talking about, blessing. And uh, another thing is, I just uh, since I became father very recently only, I started feeling it also. Uh, you know, I feel so proud about my baby. I don't know why she didn't achieve anything yet. She's just growing. I feel so great about her. <laughs> you know, I guess all of you fathers, you might, I mean, you might have experienced that. You know, they don't need to do anything. <laughs> just growing itself is making us have, so very happy. And uh, similarly, God is so very happy about us. That's the first point he wanted to tell us, Apostle Paul. So that's what I was trying to present from all this. The word blessing you talk about, holy you talk about, blameless you talk about, adoption you talk about. All these things are talking about one single thing. God is so very happy about us. The same point which you have mentioned. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it adds value. Pastor Dan, you wanted to say something? Oh, uh, okay. I was just waiting to see if somebody else was going. Uh, a very uh, kind of a strange question <laughs> that I want to ask, and that is, there is mention of uh, 
you know, God's opinion about us being so great. And he has chosen us, you know, through adoption uh, into sonship. When we talk about his opinion about us being so great and choosing us, is this in comparison to someone else or something else? You almost wonder, we have priority over somebody else? Is, is, is there... A, I mean, can we think like that? Are you talking about, again, uh, God has great opinion about Christians and not about others in that sense? No, no, no. no. He has a great opinion about us as humans. Mm -hmm. Is there maybe a comparison to angelic beings? Mm -hmm. Angels. Or, uh, or other creation, created order? I personally feel to respond to this, uh, you others can add. For me, number one is it doesn't matter. Personally, I'm telling it doesn't matter to me. Number one, uh, number two, Bible doesn't reveal much about angelic beings and these things, and the Scripture talks about salvation to humans. And Jesus did not become an angel. Very clearly, it is written he became a human. So that itself reveals uh, the kind of opinion he has towards this uh, these creatures, humans. And so, uh, what it my it goes about angels and others. Uh, it basically it they don't have any part in my relationship with God and in salvation that I experience with Him. So it doesn't matter to me much. Others can add. Uh, this is just my personal thought. Yeah, Sharon, you have your hand up. It's mentioned in the scriptures, um, uh, God has chosen us as the first fruits of his salvation and uh, his opinion about us. We all are included in the first fruits. Uh, I, was, I, I would uh, wonder whether this first fruits, uh, Jesus Christ is the first of the first fruits. We are the first fruits and then those who belong to Christ after his coming. The sons and daughters that we have been blessed with and called through adoption, we are given sonship uh, in Christ. And that is a great love we have, the Father has for us. Is it only for the first fruits? Uh, this adoption is there, or we are called sons and daughters uh, as first fruits. What about those who are his at Christ's second coming? Those who come into Christ after his second coming? And uh, 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 what is their stat like sort of status in God's eyes? Those who come, those who are brought into Christ. I'm talking about particularly them. Um, in that case, but uh, but I would like to consider, we are not even the first fruits in the uh, sequence you are sh you are sharing. How <laughs> you know the apostles are the first fruits. <laughs> None of us. Uh, we consider about people who are going to. Uh, accept Jesus later and all. So there are no, uh, say, you know, there are only two. Number one is first fruit, that is Jesus. All the rest is the second, that's all. There is no three, four, five, six and all. So all are only one. So, uh, yeah, that's what it, there is nothing to be considered even at the point of uh, Jesus coming. All are same thing. Mr. Zakari, would you like to clarify that? Uh, I think, um, you know, we have a scripture that says that God is not a respecter of persons. So in that, uh, in that respect, there will be no second class citizens in the kingdom. <laughs> we won't have casteism in, in, in uh, the kingdom. We are all uh, sons and daughters, uh, you know, like we have children in the family. Uh, all the children uh, are equally loved and there is no, you know, just because one is second born doesn't mean to say he or she is second class compared to the first born. <laughs> so in, in, in God, there is no distinction that way. Uh, uh, what uh, we also call the bride of Christ. Um, sometimes I wonder if we are the bride of Christ, that's definitely so for us. 
again i come to the question as after god sec uh, jesus second coming those who will be uh, his uh, does the same apply to them uh, would they you know we, uh, we are called the bride what about uh, what about the ones who come into christ after, on his return and belong to him Uh, so then you're uh, you're answering or you want it's a but i know we are also called the bride of christ besides sons and daughters and uh, yeah along with the apostles and us and uh, it uh, uh, we the in fact the new jerusalem coming is called the bride of christ the heavenly jerusalem uh, I, i have no doubt about that but what about the ones who come into who come out of the great tribulation who come and in, come into christ uh, what about them um in the bible we find in ephesian 4 like you know there is only one body you know uh, whether in the first century second century third century or uh, even at the time of jesus or after jesus coming or whatever throughout eternity there is only one body that is the body of christ we all are part of it so there is only birth there is no distinction uh, between uh, uh, us or even uh, the distinction between people who believe in jesus uh, at the second coming only uh, and it doesn't matter it's all one because jesus took only one incarnation and that is for all uh, humanity for all times uh, and he is not going to take another incarnation for that sake a second time so there is only one incarnation that means there is only one body that belongs in which all are included from uh, time of adam till the time of last human who is going to be born in this world any more thoughts no because uh, because it says at second at uh, so when will this uh, banquet take place uh, you know the great banquet of uh, christ taking his bride unto himself and the great banquet will it be uh, will it be before uh, christ uh, uh, reign and rule on the earth uh, before before like uh, or will it be after he is set after he has no it mentioned the you know the bible scripture mentioned that we will all be celebrating will be part of the great banquet i, uh, I guess banquet you know uh, could you just clarify that uh, what it is what right. you just shared what you just shared helps me to understand uh, help me to understand very much uh, but you are speaking from two uh, perspectives number one is the sequence which we heard for several times that is there and second thing is you have all we already seeing the bride and groom things in a too literal sense too literal sense bride means only one person so if we are the bride the other people cannot be part of this so like a bride in literal sense we are looking the bride and groom thing is not about a literal sense we are going to get married as such or anything it is about it, these all are metaphorical to explain explain the kind of love excitement god has towards his uh, people and these are metaphorical to explain uh, what he is expecting of us and in the bible it is also written god is called uh, god called us god called himself as mother and we are his children he jesus called us brothers we are brothers or bride we are children or bride we are god is father or our uh, groom so these are metaphorical languages bertie so these words cannot be taken seriously uh, sorry not seriously these words cannot be taken literally we need to take the essence the spirit the emotion uh, the author is use uh, trying to communicate when he uses these metaphors okay thank you <laughs> any more questions
in case if there are no questions we'll uh, close with a word of prayer and because we have a cottage meeting also actually right after this we have to rush to manawa's place uh, for a cottage meeting uh, so we'll close it with a word of prayer perhaps uh, may i ask uh, mr uh, you know uh, sorry may, mrs nagar nagar uh, would you please close in prayer You have to unmute. Okay. You are on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Father, Almighty God, we come before your throne, Father, thanking you, Father, for everything. You are such a gracious God and you're opening our minds every day. We do not understand things in eternal terms, but you have given us simple words to understand and appreciate every day, Father. Please open our minds to your great truth and help us to obey you in everything. Father, we are really blessed to meet as at this time with the Zoom. We are really, really blessed to meet all the people there. Please continue to strengthen us, help us, Father, in our infirmities. Teach us, Father, every day and make us like Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank you, Father, for this day. Please bless the rest of this day. And we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I wish you all uh, a good night rest. And a good day and a good day to Nagas. <laughs>